I used to wonder why when I went out to eat the next day, I would be even more hungry. Or for two days, I just would feel like my appetite had increased if I really enjoyed myself. This video isn't designed to be something to scare you away from having a good feast and enjoying food. But there are a lot of people like myself that in an effort to lose fat or to stay at a certain body fat percentage will kind of restrict and then have a cheat meal sort of thing. And there is a lot of evidence now helping us understand that maybe that's not the best way. And oh my gosh, for the longest time, I thought I was the only one. I thought that a cheat meal or going out to eat and having a big meal was actually going to help me psychologically because I was getting the emotional satisfaction out of the food. But now the literature supports it's the other way. It makes me want to eat more. And we're going to talk about that. And we're also going to talk how to avoid it. After today's video, I put a link down below for 15% off Armra Colostrum. Colostrum is one of the coolest things that I've added into my life in the last couple of years. Now, it is something that is really, really unique, especially with Armra, because they are pretty much the only one that has this cold potent technology, which means that it's maintaining the bioactive compounds in the colostrum. So normally, if you get colostrum, it's heated and it defeats the entire purpose of the microbial benefit, of the gut effect, because all the bioactive compounds get incinerated in the heat. So a cold potent technology that Armour uses makes it so it's actually preserving the integrity of the colostrum the way that it's truly supposed to be. That's why they're really taking the world by storm and they've put colostrum back on the map in a world where colostrum was kind of felt to be almost hokey because it didn't really work. Now, the evidence with colostrum and the lactoferrin in colostrum I've done videos talking about it. It's awesome. So anyhow, that link is down below. You go to tryarmra.com slash Thomas, tryarmra.com slash Thomas, and that is a 15% off discount link, top line of the description underneath this video. Okay, so this study was published in obesity. Really interesting, okay? It had subjects go on either a high or low calorie diet, kind of split it up into a couple of different things for a little while, okay? Basically to establish a baseline. And then what it had them do is it had them Go ahead and do two days of eating in a surplus. Pretty significant surplus. So it was almost like, hey, think, think bodybuilder for a second. Bodybuilder does a show and then afterwards he goes to town for a couple of days. But this wasn't even going that much to town. This was like saying, I'm gonna take the weekend and just enjoy the weekend with good food. What they found is that just by doing this for two days, it increased not only their hunger, not, the, not only their desire for food and their thoughts about food, but it actually increased their food intake significantly for four days after this. So it's not like, okay, we can make the argument on the blood sugar thing. I've seen that before. Have a cheat meal. Okay, you get done with the cheat meal and for the, for the next day you're hungry because your blood sugar is kind of on a roller coaster maybe. That's, that's fair, that's fair. You have this like, you know, hypoglycemic effect. Totally get it. Not for four days. Okay, it's affecting the brain in some ways. What this study demonstrated is that the brain is actually undergoing some level of change that happens when we go in a deficit and then we all of a sudden have a bunch of calories. The brain undergoes change that says, if you've got it, give it to me. Because it, uh, the brain goes into a little bit of a scarcity mode when you're in a deficit and it says, okay, like we're gonna get comfortable with this. Once you, there's a saying of like opening the floodgates and people say that, it's like, I don't wanna even touch that food because once I open the floodgates, it's on. It's because brain chemistry might actually change. You have that cheat meal, it opens the floodgates, the body sends you signals, it's telling you, there's fuel, grab it. Grab it while you can, get hungry. Dig as much as you can. Now, why is this hugely problematic? Well, it's problematic because you're gonna eat more, but it's also problematic because if you've been dieting, you've been trying to lose fat, you've probably been restricting calories and your basal metabolic rate has decreased, which means when you do eat more, it has a bigger negative impact because your basal metabolic rate is lower. So every little bit that you eat more has a bigger impact each time your metabolic rate goes down. It's not like you just have a cheat meal and you ingested 200 extra calories above maintenance and you gain a smidget of fat. It's more like, okay, I've reduced my caloric intake so much that now my metabolism is slower. So each time you have that same cheat meal, it's a bigger surplus. Because each time your basal metabolic rate goes down and the surplus stays the same or the calories stay the same, the surplus itself is bigger. So you might not be eating more, but you're eating more relative to your metabolic rate. So instead of you going, I'm eating 
2,000 calories, 2,500 calories, 3,000 calories, 3,500. No, it's more like you're eating the same, but your body is assimilating less and less and less and less, all at the same time that according to this study, you're wanting to eat more. So what is the answer? What is the takeaway? I thought cheat meals were the right thing because of the emotional satisfaction. There is this thing called G-flux. It's called energy flux. If you eat 5,000 calories and burn 5,000 calories, and I eat 3,000 calories and burn 3,000 calories, we're not burning the same amount. We're not both at net zero. No, you're gonna actually burn more fat than I am because there is a mobilization cost. Eating more and moving more is better. So the best thing that you can do when you are trying to lose fat is when you do increase those calories, increase your activity with it. Don't make crazy decisions and say, I'm gonna go punish myself on the treadmill or something like that. No, no, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about eat more and walk around more throughout the day, make a concerted effort. It's not sick and twisted. It's doing the right thing and it will preserve your metabolism. It'll preserve your metabolic rate. So if you increase those calories, you should do so every once in a while, but you should be aware of it and move with it because if the body sees that you're incinerating those, you're eating those and you're moving them, it's gonna deem them as useful versus not useful, where it says, okay, well, we're not using them right now, so let's store them. It's all about keeping that metabolic rate high. Also, of course, putting the muscle on. And of course, your cheat meals, if you have them, the foundation should be protein. The foundation should be protein, so you fill yourself up with that, you get the mental satisfaction. It's okay if it has sugar, it's okay if it has fat, but if the base of it is protein, you're gonna do so much less damage, and you're gonna have significantly less impact on the subsequent days in terms of your hunger and your intake. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.